Tron Armstead sits down with Good Morning Football. Brian Baldinger. Also, Colin Coward might have said something nice about the Dolphins. What is up, Finn? Hands. Got a, two videos today we're going to react to. One being uh, Teron Armstead sitting down with Brian Baldinger. He actually breaks down some film. I think that's going to be really fun and interesting. Uh, so I'm going to show that. We'll react to that. Hopefully I don't get copyright claimed. Being that I'm reacting to it. YouTube, do better. And then uh, Colin Coward came out with the... He ranks his divisions and who the division winners are. And I was told to watch it. So we'll listen to it. Because, again, I don't want to get copyright claimed. So we'll listen to it, but I heard it to check it out. And, you know, Colin Coward got low expectations. But before we jump into that, I have to shout out, first and foremost, today's sponsor. And that is Clean the World. I've been talking about them. They have been sponsor for a hot minute. Uh, love working with them. I love that the fact that they're sponsorship. If you don't know about them, Clean the World, which the link will be in the description. Great, great organization. They provide soap, fresh water, socks, toothbrushes, toothpaste to third world countries, to areas with natural disasters, to areas that need it. Sean Seipler is a great guy put the organization together been running it for a very long time huge dolphin fan and i'm very happy and proud to be a part of it check them out link is in the description clean the world they're doing some really great things for the world also got to shout out some new members on the membership side florida boy 925 thank you so much for joining the membership again if you haven't yet and if any other members haven't yet i answered a uh, bunch of questions on the Q&A video, plus you got a bunch of cool content on the community tab, so go check that out. And on the Patreon side, we have Pete Martinez. Thank you so much for joining the Patreon. Also, there is special um, videos for you as well over on the Patreon. There is the Walking Talking, Episode 1, Episode 2. You got also have a special video, all that good stuff. So if you want to be a member, you hit the Join button next to the Subscribe button. If you want to be a patron, it is linked in the description. So now that that's out of the way, let me scoot over. And we're going to react first and foremost to what um, Taron Armstead had to say. I believe they can actually be one of the teams that challenge KC in the AFC this season. Building off that success so they had in year one still of the Mike Daniel era. Key Cog in that operation joins us now. These have been awesome. We go to the film room. It is my guy, Brian Baldinger, who's ready to take it away. Mike, joining me BBs. today is the four-time Pro Bowl left tackle, now with the Miami Dolphins. Teron Armstead, I just saw you down in the soupy conditions of South Florida last week for an OTA, Teron. Like, those are not easy conditions to go out there and get through practice, but you guys did. But I want to really kind of get into this offense because you told me last year, Teron, watch out, Baldy, we're going to be good. And I think we all kind of <laughs> saw the beginning of it, Teron, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's just the beginning. I feel like there's a lot more to come. So how about you join me in the film room? Let's go through some plays here and kind of walk us through what the design, what the, what the execution level is supposed to be like, and some of the coaching points, if you will. So okay. let's just... The one thing I do like, and like Brian Baldinger said, is he told him last year to watch out for this offense. And that was just at first getting installed. That is with a head coach, you know, kind of having rookie struggles. That's with a little, you know, injuries here and there. Run game kind of being haltered here and there. Year two. I'm excited. Let's start in the run game here. Let's start in the run game. Let's uh, get your eyes down here. Against Buffalo. You're going to fold the left guard and center here, but you're going to go up on the middle linebacker. And I don't know here, Teron, if this play is designed to go outside to the left or if Raheem Mostert just sees big daylight up, up the middle and he sees his left tackle there and he goes, I'm going to go run behind Teron here. <laughs> Yeah, so so uh, honestly speaking, this one this one was kind of a, a breakdown. Um, it's a misdirection, so we got the, the double pull yeah. to get the eyes of the linebackers. We want the linebackers to flow left with the pull, 
um, the three technique had got up the field, which kind of disrupted the play. Raheem just made a made a okay. an incredible. Yeah, you uh, could tell what they wanted, and they wanted that lane to be open up the middle. But you know, Ingold kind of struggled with his block, and they didn't pull the guys they wanted to. Um, adjustment, seeing daylight, and took it. And actually, I think we got about ten to twelve yards on this one. Yeah, because you see the pull here. So double pull. That one, was uh, two. just Raheem kind of rescuing. That's what he was talking about right here. The double pull, one, two, and then he saw the daylight up the middle, took it. Valak Ingold held his block a little bit longer. The play, but you stayed on your side. Better. Or even here. You had a nice game. Let's get to one of your foundational plays here, Teron. I mean, you can call it whatever you want to call it, but it's just simple outside zone. Uh, it's zone blocking. You're up against Buffalo, Buffalo here. You're going to take A.J. Epinesa, the defensive end here, anywhere he wants to go. I mean, you don't have to block him in any direction. Take him wherever he wants to go and let the back find the daylight, right? No, for sure, for sure. So this is a... This is a staple of our offense. This is the bread and butter. This is what we come to the table with, right? So also outside zone, this is what we're basing our offense uh, around. This is the foundation of everything. So really the goal for us up front is take off. Sprint off the ball, hit anything that you see uh, that's wearing a, a different color, and, and create lanes, right? So so this this stretch play, it continuously stresses the, the defense. It, stre it stresses the edge for an edge set, right? So my defender, the yep. DN, he's trying to stop that, that create that cutback for the linebacker, mm -hmm. for the running back to run back into the defensive line and run back to the linebackers. So we're able to create that space on the edge with the with the guys that we got in the backfield, create those lanes, they hit it. They hit it downhill. Yeah, essentially what that, that linebacker is trying to do is set the edge. We don't let Teron Armstead get to the outside not knowing that's what, his plan is for him to bounce to the inside. So Teron Armstead just pushed his guy, let him go where he wanted to do, and there was a lane. And speed comes in where because on that last play, Raheem Mostert beat the unblocked defender mm -hmm. with his speed to the outside. Now, you have a lot of play-action passes that come off this design right here. Teron, so, like, right here, this is actually a very difficult play because for you, because you're going to pull the left guard here and uh, really – play action type pass off power right here and you've got a lot of space to protect right here mm -hmm. so walk us through your mindset knowing your left guard's not there you got a big yeah. hole inside and you still got to protect the edge on the outside no for sure this is this is one of the most challenging protections but it can't be all o-line friendly if we are running the, the ball well and we're, we're getting i said that i said that on twitter and I got some flack for it. A little bit. Just one person. But the Miami Dolphins were second in the NFL. Let me see if I can find the tweet for you guys. So right here, play action usage uh, on early downs in 2022. The Dolphins were second with 55%. 55% play action usage uh, rate on early downs last year. Second. So, and I said that to him, for the play action to work, you need to be able to run the ball. Because if you're not running it and you're not running it success successful, they're not going to bite the play action because they're expecting to run the whole time. This uh, attention from the, the secondary, the linebackers and the, and the takers to step up, it opens the lanes for, for Tua naturally yep. to hit, the, hit those guys that's filling in behind. Uh, for me, this is one of the most challenging protections because everywhere else is, is a double team or you have eyes of, of one of the teammates. So it's a lot of space. I'm trying to sail, run sail. So it's a little more up, risky um, because it's not a pass pass set at all. I'm, I'm kind of run sailing, so I'm selling run. Hopefully that I can get his eyes and get my hands on and, and sustain the block for uh, three to four seconds. And the last thing you want to do on that play there, Teron, is get beat inside. Mm -hmm. So you're always the last thing I want to do. You're inside with your post hand, right? Because that's the quickest route to the quarterback. For sure, for sure. Yeah, inside inside move would kill that play immediately. Um, because a lot the, the left guard is, is void in that space. So it's a huge gap. Uh gotta be very conscious with my inside hand and, and get my inside foot down, not to get crossed over. So you have an offense where there is a basically a play action pass off every single run, Teron. And so 
selling the run is so important, like on this next play right here, where you're really selling run right here, and you're trying to get the defense to move with you. I mean, this is this is just sell out to the right right here. Like everybody's yeah. blocking down, all right, and you're getting the defense to react there. You're sealing the edge right here, and you're but two. Uh, let me just stop it real quick, right? They weren't that successful at running the ball there, right? So instead of instead of everyone biting on the run, do you notice how Edmonds is dropping back into coverage and they're both backpedaling here instead of trying to come in for the run? Was right here is just riding, gliding, and he's just waiting for. See how they're dropping back into coverage? No, for sure, for sure that. Like gotta I, run like more. I said, it goes back to the run game, right? We're running the right. We're, we're running. Watch. Um, with Watch how these and, two and don't bite the run, five, right? Six, seven, you got the movement games. here. Defense has no other option but to respect them. Mm -hmm. and, and you see these see drop back. stepping up. You see the, the safety stepping He's up. He's still handing on the ball. And, and Tua does a, an amazing job with his eyes and his footwork to take advantage of that. So uh, anytime we're running the ball well, we get those full sales going all in one direction but you see you how they make it look exactly like right every back, coach even when he still is, is the ball. Run. only thing you can do is go down the field so the takeoff the intent the the the, the hit the contact is is all run and and the play fake, fakes of Tua are so important to sell that run on that particular play right there he can't he can't he can't show too soon not a second too soon Especially like a, a defense like Buffalo, you got some very cerebral guys out there. They they played a lot of ball, so you don't want those linebackers popping out because Tua pulled the, the fake too soon. So the mesh between the running back and, and and Tua to ride that ride that fake, him to use his eyes and then hit the guys filling in right behind uh, that linebacker stepping up. He's he's incredible at that. So I feel like this offense, Teron, is a symphony. And when it's all working together, <laughs> it's almost impossible to stop. Like this, this next play right here. I mean, Detroit. this is an example right here against Detroit where it's outside zone, but it's, it's a toss crack. You get a chance to really get out, use your athleticism, <laughs> your speed, and your job basically, anybody that shows up in a different color jersey, just eliminate. <laughs> Let the back find the alley, the outside, wherever it is. Good luck. For sure, for sure. This is a play I've ran countless amount of times throughout my career. We ran it a lot when I was in the world with the Saints. Uh, Sean Payne would lean on it in, in very critical situations. So it's a ton of third downs in, in, in the games that we, we finished out with this, with this play. So <laughs> toss crack, it gives me an opportunity to get that first completely away from the defense. And I get a chance to be the runner in a sense, right? So I can read and yep. kind of navigate the space for the runner. On this one, particularly the corner was, he has outside contained. Every corner has outside contained. So the, the guy in the alley, it was my my job to to take him out of the alley and put him in front of the corner and, and give the running back that, that lane to get a first down. I have a feeling you love that play, Teron. Like, you know, it's, it's one just of my a mismatch favorites. out there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to, to two quick plays here, Teron, because I feel like, if we show this play against Pittsburgh, you're going to hang out a weak side, outside zone right here. And the way that it finishes right here, you've cut this defense in half in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Like, sure. there is a sure. clear alley right there for Raheem to run. Like, whether it's for by sure. design or he fell into it, it looks perfectly designed. So this is, um, this is, this is when it, when it all, all the, the music, like you said, the symphony, it all, it all plays together. So we get the expansion that we're looking for on the front side. But this play happens because of, of Connor Williams and Robert Hunt. Robert Hunt, an, an incredible young right guard. He's, he's one of the best right guards in the yep. game. Um, so here here. for him to be able to to reach and cut off mm -hmm. Cam Hayward, a future Hall and of Famer, he makes the play. It. And that's the beauty of this offense. Yep. It allows the offense to line. If you look, and like he's saying, Robert Hunt and Connor Williams – is the reason why this play works so well because essentially Connor Williams gives up his guy to Robert Hunt. They shift, right? Connor Williams goes, Robert Hunt moves over to the center position. And that's where he picks up his guy, and then Connor Williams leads that lead block. Like the beat playmakers, like this is Rob Hunt's first down. And you know, he should he should get whatever, one carry for twelve yards. So Pittsburgh just saw that play which sets up this next play here, Teron. And that's what it, this offense does. You're always setting the defense up. 
because this is basically the exact same play mm -hmm. right here, strong side. Mm -hmm. And Tua is going to really fake it to Raheem coming underneath motion right here. <laughs> and this thing, you take Pittsburgh completely out of the passing lanes, and it opens up for Tua right over the middle here to Waddle. Love it. I love it. Listen, it's uh, <laughs> like, like you said, it, we have we have a lot of plays that complement each other, and that is the the beauty of the offense. You you get so many actions that start the same. It freezes defenders, and with the with the speed that we that we have, and the playmakers that we have, that that split second can make all the difference. And our, our quarterback, the 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 way he's moving guys with his eyes, and then his precision when when these guys are getting the ball, they can they can take off running. I'm excited, Baldy. Yeah, it's you could see all the little nuances and it's the stuff I was talking about, especially with this offense and especially with what Mike McDaniel is going to do last year. And if what, oh, what game was it? Was it Chicago? I think it might've been Chicago. They ran the same play four times and three of the, no, three times. And two of the three times it was a handoff. They would come around, they would motion Tyreek Hill and then they would hand the ball off. And then they'd come around, they'd motion Tyreek Hill, and they'd hand the ball off. And every time they motioned Tyreek Hill, somebody followed. And then somebody followed. And then the third time, again, and, and the, he says to two, if someone follows Tyreek Hill, you hand the ball off. If somebody follows Tyreek Hill, you hand the ball off. The third time, Tyreek Hill motioned. It was from a right to a left. Nobody followed him. Because now they're like, they're just going to run the ball, try to eat the clock up. Tyreek Hill ran a real route, jumped it off to him. Dolphins ended up eating the clock up, winning the game. He likes running that type of stuff, but um, I, I, I'm just excited to see the growth, right? Fourth ranked in pass, sixth ranked overall offense. I'm excited to see the growth because there wasn't a big turnover on talent and a, not a big change when it came to the offense. So there should be a growth with Tua, with the wide receivers, with the offensive line, with the running backs, tight ends. You know, there wasn't a big change. So I'm excited to see the second year growth, and I'm excited to see if Mike McDaniel can take that second step and, you know, fix the mistakes that he did. So now we're going to listen to Colin Coward because I normally get copyright claimed if I show two seconds of him. So I'm wondering if I got copyright claimed already. And if you're watching this video and you're like, there's big chunks missing out of your video, it's probably because I got copyright claimed and I have to remove them. Um, but this is Colin Coward predicting his NFL standings. Now I'll say this. You guys know how I feel about Colin Coward. Um, I don't like him. I think he is, he says things for people to watch. He says things, um, just to rile people up. He said when Adam Gase signed with the Jets that you're pairing, and I wish I was making this up. You can Google it. You're pairing, Ad, you're pairing Adam Gase with Sam Darnold. I'm buying my tickets to the Super Bowl for the Jets. So he's going to predict the AFC East. And again, I haven't seen this, um, but we'll see what he has to say. We'll see what he has to say. So I'll start in the AFC East. Here is my woe. Miami wins it. Excuse me? Buffalo Jets Patriots. A, this whole Stephon Diggs cancel minicamp thing is a bigger story than people are letting on. I will say this about that, right? Von Miller came out the day that he didn't go to minicamp, so... Essentially, if you know what happened in Buffalo, Stefan Diggs didn't show up for day one of minicamp. Um, and then Von Miller came out and said he's siding with Stefan Diggs. Then second day he showed up and then they canceled the third day of minicamp. So. On. That is weird. Secondly, Vic Fangio's defense, the people I trust in the league say he is the best acquisition Miami made, not Jalen Ramsey. Mm -hmm. He said, watch that defense. It's getting copied all over the league. Also, I get an offensive coach, Mike McDaniel, against the defensive coach, and I watched McDaniel outcoach him three times last year, and I think Miami's better, and I'm not sure Buffalo is. So I think Miami wins the division. 
Buffalo's a playoff team. Jets are good. They will vie to the end for a playoff team. They'll be 9-10 win team. But right now, this morning, don't have them in. Patriots 4. AFC North. That's what Colin Coward has to say. Um, I'm not there yet. Uh, you guys, again, you guys know how I do. I'd rather be surprised than let down. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> I don't disagree with the fact that Vic Fangio is one of the, if not the best acquisition that the Dolphins did. I agree 100% with that. Um, it's around, like you said, around the NFL, Vic Fangio, people copy his defense. Um, Mike McDaniel having, you know, in training camp and practice going up against each other. And then this is what people underestimate about adding Vic Fangio. It's not even he's going to help the defense and Mike McDaniel's not going to have to worry about it. Like if you remember, I don't, you can comment below. I don't remember what game it was. It might've been the Steelers game. Oh, it was some game. He yelled at the defense, fix that blank because they were just doing whatever they wanted to. It might have been Detroit. I think it was the Detroit game. He was like, fix that blank. Because they they were Detroit was doing whatever they wanted. He doesn't have to worry about that with Vic Fangio. But also, Vic Fangio is gonna he's gonna they're coaching against each other in training camp and practice. So Vic notices some weaknesses in the offense, he's gonna say it to Mike McDaniel. Look. I'm noticing that when you run this, you're leaving this open. Or I notice when you do this, there's this counteract that they're going to send this blitz here. So not only is he going to be helping our defense, but he's going to be helping the offense. So, yeah. But I don't know. First, I'll take it. I love an AFC East championship. I got a hat, t-shirt, all that stuff. But what I want is a Super Bowl, but I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. Comment below. Let me know what you think. What do you think about what Toron Armstead said? And what do you... I'm surprised Colin Coward said anything positive about the Dolphins. Uh, what do you think about what Colin Coward had to say about the Dolphins? Uh, other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. If any news breaks over the next two days, I will make a video. Uh, if I don't make a video on Sunday, I want to say happy Father's Day. Early father day, Father's Day to everyone. I'm going to see The Flash on Father's Day for a little bit. Get out of the house. Me and my wife. Someone's going to come watch, my sister's going to watch the baby, all that good stuff. So if I don't see you on Sunday, happy Father's Day. Maybe I'll make a quick short. Again, you I, you can make shorts on YouTube now, so maybe I'll make a quick one just wishing you guys a happy Father's Day. But on that, I'll see you guys on Monday. If anything, like usual, stay classy. My friends up.